public libraries, particularly in rural counties, are dealing with a different kind of challenge, this time with funding and power. Some state legislators are passing new laws that critics say will politicize libraries like in Lawrence County, Kentucky. NBC News reporter Julie Serkin spoke with members in that community about what's happening. In an area like this that is very rural, very low socioeconomic, exposing kids to diversity, inclusiveness, uh, in whatever way that may be, is of the utmost importance. Carly Pelfrey is at the helm of the Lawrence County Public Library in Eastern Kentucky. Gosh, the growth here in our library with our collection, with our staff, um, with our patrons, the county population has seen a little bit of growth too. A lot of positive changes. Um, also some changes that are a little concerning. In April, legislators in the Bluegrass State overrode the governor's veto, approving SB 167, which will transform public library boards by turning over power to local county judges. Prior to this bill, libraries were politically neutral. You know, our boards were neutral. We had no affiliation with a political party or a candidate or an elected official, and that's gonna change. Public libraries across the U.S. are being challenged on funding and censorship. We've never witnessed the volume of challenges reported to our office in almost 20 years. Um, we had 729 challenges reported to us in 2021. The typical number reported in a year is less than half of that, according to Deborah Caldwell-Stone, who oversees the Office of Intellectual Freedom for the American Library Association. What we're seeing is this attack on books that represent groups that have been traditionally marginalized in our communities, um, just as they're finding a place on the public stage. Back in Kentucky, supporters of the bill here say it isn't meant to politicize libraries, but restore accountability to taxpayers instead. Censorship wasn't even discussed. It was how is this money appropriately spent? Now, if the counties choose to adopt the new appointment system and a different board gets on there, they're gonna look at different content very possible. I can't tell you that that won't happen. State Senator Philip Wheeler represents this district and he helped shepherd this legislation across the finish line. It'll go into effect early next year. I think what the problem is under the current system, it goes back to a really a lack of diversity and outlook and diversity and opinion. Under the new law, counties will have the choice to opt out of the new system. If the county chooses to do nothing, the status quo reigns. The legislation could give fiscal control of libraries to local officials, raising alarm in rural regions like Lawrence County, a community of 16,000. A lot of our lawmakers, a lot of our legislatures are so out of touch with what public libraries actually do. Beyond the usual books and DVDs, this library provides free lunches for kids during the summer. And with broadband inaccessible in some areas, they also provide internet and resources families may not have. I didn't have a computer to use for college and I would come here to work. No other entity in town is putting on any free programs, any activities for the kids. The trickle down effect will affect our boards. It'll affect our budgets. And if we don't have the funding to provide these kinds of services, then what happens? Officials in Campbell County, Wyoming, voted to defund the local library in May, saying it lacked transparency around how it buys and discards books. But critics say it's their way of banning books they deem inappropriate. We're actually seeing efforts to target school board elections and library board elections. School libraries in Tennessee are now controlled by the State Board of Education instead of local boards after a bill was passed in April. It's really um, sometimes frightening to see this effort to use public libraries as, and school libraries as tools of indoctrination. In Jamestown Township, Michigan, voters rejected a property tax that makes up 84 percent of the local library's annual budget. Officials say this will likely force the library to close. It really is insidious in every way, and it goes so far beyond funding. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.